Interrogation, falsification and language games is the 20th century approaches to religious language. Top two boxes is for those two. These are the approaches that you take to the language. So you have cognitive versus non-cognitive. You must know this. Cognitive are truth claims. These are facts, something that can be known as either true or false. Non-cognitive. Uh, do not describe facts, cannot be determined as true or false. Um, one of the last slides, or the last slide of this PowerPoint, is showing which arguments fall where. But you need to know which ones are cognitive, which ones are non-cognitive, because they might ask you that in the exam. I do not see you getting through a philosophy exam without religious language getting you somewhere. Whether it's religious language via negative approaches or this. So we bring in verification as our first argument. Uh, this takes us down to where the line is, just above the three at the bottom of the page. So verification is A.J. Ayer. A.J. Ayer is the name associated with verification. A.J. Ayer was part of the logical positivist, so this goes in the long thin box underneath. Um, the logical positivists of the Vienna Circle. Why are they called the Vienna Circle? Because they were a group that met in Vienna. It was led by the writer Marich Slick. They met regularly to discuss issues rising in logic. They believed that following the work of writer Auguste Comte, that theological interpretations of events and experiences belonged in the past to an unenlightened age when God was used as an explanation for anything that science had not yet mastered. So, basically, why they are called positivist is because the positivist age moved away from religion, away from God, away from the unenlightened age where God was just the God of gaps, where God was used to explain everything, into empirical evidence into senses into evidence for investigation where science can test it so the reason why they're called positivist is because it's about moving away from god into science it's called logical because it's focused on logic and reason so that's where the name logical positivists come into this is verification falsification and it was uh, wittgenstein had an influence on them but wasn't part of them but basically, they were just a, a group of blokes that got together to drink whiskey and smoke their pipes, um, and they wanted to call themselves a really cool name. And so they come up with the logical positivists. The three boxes underneath are where we're going to bring in verification. So please do summarise as best as you can. You can always go back and fill in the detail later. So, the first box underneath is for Ayer. Ayer is the name you need to know. Ayer is your emotivism guy of metaethics as well. It's the same man. So, that is the uh, for that first box. Ayer in 1936 wrote Language, Truth and Logic at the age of 26. It's a real snore. I do have it if you wish to borrow it, but I don't recommend it. He used the ideas of Wittgenstein and the Vienna Circle to set down rules to judge if the language we use is means anything. So don't forget, religious language is about is the language we use meaningful. Like metaethics is ethical language being meaningful. This is, is re religious language meaningful. Thus, statements are meaningful if they fall into analytical and synthetic. Now, we know those words. We came across those words in cosmological and ontological Analytic and synthetic are um, terms for English language. It's not philosophical terms. They're not terms that this man's created. Analytical is true by definition, such as those found in the dictionary. All bachelors are unmarried men. Bachelors, unmarried goes together. If you said all bachelors are married men, you're just wrong, because by definition, a bachelor means unmarried. These include tautologies, where you say the same thing twice, so a bit like uh, univocal language, so ice is icy. Or mathematical statements. All of these are meaningful. Triangles have three sides. All analytical. On the other hand, synthetic are not part of the definition. They add additional pieces of information that you need to then 
explore. Herbert is a bachelor. Sounds like a bachelor's name. Herbert is a bachelor is not part of the definition of Herbert and needs additional information of meeting him to see, oh yeah, he is married or, oh no, he's not married and therefore it's meaningful. So even if Herbert is a bachelor and you meet Herbert and he's actually married, so therefore he's not a bachelor, it's still meaningful because you've proved it false. So you still found evidence against it. So it's still meaningful. But you need to find Herbert to find whether it's meaningful or not. You need to be able to test the truth or the veracity of that statement.